Alright guys, um, we're back again with another tutorial. Uh, we're going to be doing some color grading, uh, trying to replicate some film look, some films, our favorite films, trying to replicate the, the look or the grade that they have applied on that film. Um, we're going to wait for a little 10 minutes, 5 minutes sorry, and then we're going to kick off and try and apply some grade to this uh, footage. Um, this footage right here on the screen is shot with the Red Dragon and is actually 8K footage. If we go back into um, the footage itself, if we click on the clip um, this is one of the advantages of um, DaVinci Resolve it tells me right here if you follow my cursor it tells me right here that the footage is 8, 8192 by 3456 that's R3D that's red file and it's at 8k so it's very high resolution and um, what we're going to do is we're going to try and replicate the look of this film here. As we talked about the other day, um, we've got a um, color palette to guide us in terms of trying to achieve that look. So we're kind of continuing on um, what we discussed in terms of wardrobe, costumes, making a difference in um, the final look of the footage. <coughs> So we're just going to hang out a little bit and then we're going to kick off and try and replicate this. Try and replicate this and match it with um, this footage right here. So um, I'm going to be a bit silent so, um, so that we can concentrate on what we're doing. Um, Obviously, we're going to go through uh, trying to see what a color palette is telling us, trying to see um, whether we have uh, the similar colors, color costumes or color surrounding in this particular footage matching the other one. And then we'll try and um, um, color grade it and match it together. So in the next five minutes, we're going to take off and see what we can do. And besides matching that as well, we're going to play around and try and achieve several looks that we can actually save as a LUT, which means um, we can apply that look to any of our films or any um, shots that matches this same um, costumes and surrounding. So it will be very interesting to actually know how that is going to work out. So stay tuned. We're going to kick off in a moment. And in the meantime, if you scroll down on this page, um, I believe it's on on the sixth, or if not actually on the second, well, right beneath this um, live video, um, it says the "Secret of Achieving Any Film Look." Um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, go ahead, click on that um, link and um, subscribe because very soon uh, we will not be able to be doing this live streaming or this live um, tutorials right here on Facebook. It's going to go 
again through YouTube and then scratch it onto Facebook so if you have not subscribed this is the time to do so um, the reason being is because um, Facebook somehow struggles with the live stream if um, we're doing long sessions like these and also having um, the software is running in the background and stuff it kind of slows it down and it keeps um, becoming very choppy so um, with several tests it seems like YouTube is the best way to go in um, doing the live stream so do go ahead the link below this video or this live stream the post before this live stream it says secret to achieving any film look film tutorial if you click on that it will take you to my youtube page um, hit the subscribe button so that you get prompted when we're doing the next uh, video <coughs> got a couple more minutes left and we're gonna kick off and try and see what we can get out of this This is exactly what I'm trying to um, I'm trying to explain. See the live stream keeps um, interrupting, and then also I'm just not able to reply to um, the comments because I can't actually see the comments until the live stream is done with YouTube. So um, with Facebook, so YouTube is the best uh, way to go around it. So guys, please go ahead subscribe and we'll see what we do I've seen a couple of comments underneath the post um, there was a comment I just saw just now it says where that's what all I saw and then um, it's just gone it's not allowing me to actually um, see the comments anymore so I'm actually trying to um, log on to my phone and see if that will allow me to um, read the comments if not uh, your answers will be posted after this session and I really apologize for that it's the reason why we need to jump onto YouTube which allows live comments and live um, response just not allowing me to do so not at all and unfortunately on my phone as well it keeps um, it keeps crashing the Facebook app keeps crashing for whatever reason it's just not allowing me to um, view the the comments each time I tap on the comment or on the post itself then the software app crashes so it's not allowing me to do so I wish I could but I can't all right okay without further ado um we're just going to kick off i apologize for that i am going to reply to your um your comment once um i'm done with the tutorial we'll get on it and then see what we can do in terms of replying to that comment because it's important obviously to see what you guys got to say um Yeah, it's just not allowing me. Right, okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be matching this particular shot here. Um, shot on Red Dragon. I got that from online. It does not belong to me. And uh, we're just using it for tutorial purposes. So um, not making any fun of it. 
Um, we're going to try and match that to this very look here. If you notice, if we're going to be breaking it down, you notice that um, the costumes they're wearing is all black. As much as it looks blue here, that is color graded to look blue, but it's all black. It's just different type of fabric, different type of feel, but it's mostly black. All three of the characters in this shot are dressed in black. The surrounding, the tunnel, inside the tunnel is all black. Um, the walls are very grey, very palish grey. And these lights are actually white, but they are fluorescent. They are white and they have been colour corrected or colour graded into um, that blue, blue, um, bluish feel. So first thing first, um, we're going to create a node on this particular shot and then we go onto the effects palette and then we'll pick out the color palette if you remember we did that the other day we talked about that so if we place the color palette on here it tells us again this um, chart right here is our shadow area which is down right here and then our mid-tone is the middle one and then our highlight is the last one on the right and then the main one at the bottom tells us exactly um, what's happening in this whole image so if you look at the shadow area it's all black very dark blue dark gray and mid gray ish kind of look is what we've got here so this dark here this black that we can see on the side here will be from this tunnel which is completely black and then the darker shade of um, grey are uh, supposedly this guy's calf and these walls here and then the mid-tones obviously if you see this purplish pinkish looking um, color that is their skin color because that's the only color on here that looks purple and um, um, these greys just falls on some parts of um, the costumes that they are wearing and obviously you've got the highlights the highlights are the lights that's falling the feel like that's coming from the left and hitting their faces his head and um, his hairlines here is all from this highlights here so if you see in the highlight we've got very very bright very very light grey which um, supposedly is it's like the edges of um, where the, the light hits on their costumes and then you got a pink again that is their skin color um, where it's really really overexposed or blown and then you've got um, the darker tones so that's what we've got in terms of um, this look now <coughs> If we come to the color, the image or the footage that we're going to be grading and we do the same, we create a node and drop in um, the color palette, we realize that it's a lot more of brownish look in the shadows and obviously you've got black into dark um, brown and then a bit of gray and then a tone of green. And obviously we've got the red which is this dark red flowers on her forehead and then um, mid-tones there's a lot of highlights in the mid-tones as you can see um, this whole footage is completely white in the background because supposedly it's like a desert and then you've got the skyline right at the top of the rim right there now um, remember as I said these pal um, palette this color palette um, is it replicates what we can see in this scene or in this shot so meaning if I'm moving this um, footage around you see that the color palette is sh uh, sh um, shifting as well so now that we're bringing in another character into the scene you can see that the colors obviously the gray um, the dark shadow area the, um, the shadow areas stays the same it's just that it becomes a bit more uh, neutral colors because of this person's costume and the mask and stuff and then um, the highlight area changes slightly as you see there's a bit of purple coming in that's been uh, brought in because of this man's um, shirt color and then the pink that's coming a bit more obviously because of his skin color his ear right here very very pink and um, 
that's how it works. So it's a bit like the um, the waveform scopes here. When there is a movement in a shot, you realize that the waveform moves as well accordingly. This shot is brilliantly exposed and brilliantly um, um, composite then also shot because if you look on the scope you realize that all the highlights and the shadows is all in the middle um, of the scope so between 120 128 and um, 768 so nothing is clipping on the highlights nothing is clipping in the shadows and this is how we need to learn to be able to shoot if we are able to shoot like this I will explain in a minute you realize that a color grading is very very straightforward and very very simple keeping in mind that the costumes are correct for the particular look that you're looking for. So I'm going to remove the, the color palette and um, what we're going to do now, we're going to be, um, first thing is first, we're going to, um, it's obviously color corrected already, I think it's a little bit more on the blue side so we can either use um, our temperature and shift it till we get a bit more neutral color so just quickly going over the waveform the way it worked to be able to get the color correction first obviously you do that first before you do your color grading the way um, waveform works for those who don't know how to read it you've got the three colors which represents the RGB which is the red um, green and blue and those three colors makes up an image or a neutral color so um, for example if this shot was poorly um, white balanced you would have had perhaps something like this and you realize that and just shift this color balance a little bit off then you realize that for example um, the red here is higher than the green and then the green is higher than the blue which means it's poorly um, white balanced so first thing you do is make sure you white balance it now white balancing it there are several ways of doing it but the way I do it and I find it easier for me is um, to make sure that all of these three colors lines up perfectly on the top and at the bottom so the top will rep represent the white so if they're nicely and equal on the top that means you've got accurate white in your image and the same thing goes for the bottom if it lines up accurately that means you've got perfect black so there's no green shift in the black there's no blue shifts in the black and no red so it's all about matching these things up and then once it's done you realize the image is naturally nicely lit as of now you realize that it looks a bit warm it looks a bit pink that's because I've shifted the red up um, to the highlights so um, the highlights has a bit more red introduced into it that hence why the whole image looks so pinkish and also if you look at the girl's face you realize that that's supposed to be white but it looks pink now and um, it's got a bit of pink tone to it so there's several ways of doing it um, it's either you shift around um, let me reset that quickly it's either you shift around your temperature until you get the colors right you see what's happening obviously the temperature stands for the white balance so until you shift it for it to be equal and also looking neutral to your eyes then it's perfect if not others will work with let's say um, we had too much um, red in the highlights so the red is higher than the rest of the colors then all you do is just shift it around until it nicely matches up with the remaining two so once you do that there we go we've got another very very neutral very very clean um, image so that's how um, the waveform or the scopes work in terms of color, um, color correcting before um, um, color grading so I've said so much right now let's introduce some um, the shadows because obviously it's sitting on the 128 it's not sitting on the zero 
So you want it to drop just above the zero, which means your blacks will be really black and not overexposed. So what we don't want is, if you look at um, the bottom of uh, this RGB here, if I'm going to be pressing the shadows down and it's hitting, sometimes it's passing that zero, that means I'm losing details in these shadow areas. So these darker areas, all the details there is lost. Now this is the reason why we shoot raw. So there's no point shooting raw and then color grading and losing all of those details because it's a waste of your money. So um, you always want to um, just hit the, the black, the zero line, just about hitting the zero line so that um, you still retain some of these details. So if you see all this crease inside here, it's still there. And remember, color grading, it's not... Um, a matter of um, putting so much um, colors or crushing your whites and you know making the colors or the image look very deep that's when it means that you've done a color grade no the very subtle movement makes a big difference that little little movements that you make that little wheel that you turn that very fine refinements that you make makes a big impact on the final image so um, we're going to be quickly try and match this image right here. So hold on, let me put them side by side so that it's easier. Let's get split screen on. And let's go side by side. Right, so this way we can see what we're trying to achieve here. So if you look in the shadow areas, it's very there's a lot of blue in the shadow areas, and the shadows is very very harsh. So simply, obviously, I've brought down the shadows, brought it down, so. A very natural look without losing any details and then um, the highlight is quite blown as well and that's strictly because um, if you look in the highlights on this character's face you realize that it's very very harsh so we're trying to keep that with um, the, the actual grade that we're trying to do so We'll lift up the mid-tones a little so that we get a little bit of depth in, in the face area and the mid-shadow area. Right, so I think in terms of contrast, we're nearly there. Um, let's introduce a little bit more using the S-curve. That's it. Nice contrast there. And then um, we create another node. So um, supposedly this is our base um, correction and contrast. And then the um, second node, we're going to try and get that blue into the shadow areas. Get the blue into the shadow areas. So. The simplest and quickest way to do it is just go into the shadows and then punch in that blue till the desired taste. So as you see, I'm pointing the blue and it's affecting a lot of the shadows. So if you look at her um, garment or um, the costume she's wearing here, it's looking into the blue, the guys, um, um, vest is looking blue, the mask is looking blue, so push that into the blue and then um, introduce a little bit more of the mid tones. So right there and then already we have 
that look that we want. I mean, as I said, that very little refinement makes a big, huge difference. So if we look at the before, so if we look at the before, this is where we started from and this is where we have gotten. So we've got that bluish looking um, scene that actually looks very, very similar to this right here. So if you want to push it a bit more, we can add a little bit more of um, depth in the contrast area. So we can just simply introduce a little bit more contrast into it so that we get a bit more depth. And then the highlight area um, can bring it down a little. So as you see, it's affecting the sky area here. You're getting a bit more sky um, details right there. So right there we have that look from um, that image from that film. So um, I think the mid-tone, the skin tone right here is a little bit too pink compared to what we've got here, his is a little bit washed out. So what we could do is we can easily create another node and then with that node we do a selection where we can isolate that particular um, we can isolate that particular color. So that selects it. So I've done an isolation selection with the selection tool that allows me to select the kind of color that I want to isolate from everything else. So I'll quickly refine it, refine it a little. a little bit soft in there. Put a little bit softness in there. Where we can um, isolate it. So now that we've isolated this pink of his skin, now all I'm gonna have to do is just pull down the saturation on that skin. So I can either use color boost or better yet use the saturation straight away. Um, got a saturation right here. And as you realize, as I'm pulling it down, let me just zoom in a little so that you see what I'm trying to show you right here. Hold on. So if I turn off what we've just done, you realize that you see you get that pinkness coming back in. I hope um, with the compression you'll be able to see it. Um, let me just zoom it in a little bit more. So if you pay attention to the ear side here, you realize once I turn the isolation on, it gets very fainted. So um, right, right here, we've got it nicely um, minimized. So we've brought down that color um, of saturated, saturated skin tone, so somewhat we're matching this very, very lightly. And then if 
finally create a final node. I mean, this is the very easiest way of going about it when you break down the color palette on a particular shot or a particular scene. This is the easiest way going on about it in terms of um, um, matching the colors. Um, that is in my opinion. So, I mean, there are other people out there that would do it differently. So finally, that image here is very desaturated, if you realize. It's very flat and it's not that colorful. There is color in there, but it's very desaturated, which just nearly match already anyway, um, in terms of the way it was shot. So all I'll do is, I've created another node and then I'll go and reduce the color boost, so I'll bring the color down a little. And there we are. So we're very pretty much matching um, that film look right there. So if we have a look at the before and the after. So um, the before, here's where we started from. Uh, I hope you can see that clearly on um, Facebook. Here's where we started from, and um, here's where we've ended. As you see, we are matching that look very, very nicely. And this shot was nicely shot, nicely lit. So if we're to put it side by side, um, Let's put it side by side and see what happens here. Mm -hmm. Remove this clips. So this is where we started from and this is how close we have matched this particular film look. So you see if we go along with what um, our color palette says, you realize that we do, we do easily, easily match other films or other film look. It makes the job easier. So again, the before. And the after. Before and the after. Okay, so. We've done that. Um, with DaVinci Resolve, we can easily just right click and grab a still. So we've got that still, that grade um, saved on our system. So supposedly we um, shoot um, any shots or any scene, we can easily drop this on and with a little bit of a tweak, we can exactly match this as long as the costume and uh, surrounding, the ambient surrounding is very similar. So it's as simple as that. So let's quickly reset this look and then let's try and create a different look altogether. Um, this time we're just going to go straight from the ball without any um, trying to match a particular um, film. So we're just going to create a look because remember we've got a color correction done already because the image also was cleanly shut, the white balance was on point. So we don't have to worry about that at all. So where we're going to start with is um, introducing contrast into the shot. And then we will continue with our grade. So um, the easiest way to do contrast, obviously, we all used to is the, the S-curve. 
the S curve will introduce contrast and a bit of color into the image. And you see, whatever I'm doing here, I'm making sure that I don't clip the footage. So I'm not passing the zero and I'm not passing the 100. So I'm staying in between so that it becomes very neutral as possible. And also, I'm keeping all the details in the dark areas. So that's note one. Would have called it contrast. So we've created a contrast on there. Um, if we have a look at it, you realize the before and the after. So just in implementing contrast, this is how much we've already gained. And this is just for contrast. So um, note two, we're going to be bringing out a look so let's go for a little bit something a bit more warmer than the first one we did which is very cold um, representing um, aggression and um, um, horror so the highlight will keep it nice and blue and then midtones this time around we'll go into warm area so we'll bring this red out a bit more and the shadow area Ooh, bringing a bit of green into it so it becomes a little bit more the opposite of what we did bring down the mid-tone a little bit more I mean it's very subtle movement or subtle changes that we're making it's not we're not dialing in dramatically because obviously it affects the footage so it's very very small subtle um, changes or subtle dials colors that we actually bring into the footage and that's all it is. So um, we've done the shadow, we've done mid-tones, we've introduced the blue into the highlight to keep the sky nice and blue. And then the overall, let's say we punch it up into giving it that warm, that warm look. And we can bring in um, the temperature this time around to we'll warm it up a little bit more instead of it being so cold. Warm it up a little bit more. And then um, and yes, believe it or not, this is complete different look than the first one we did. So the first one is very punchy, very harsh, very aggressive kind of look all blue and cold and this one we're trying to implement a bit of warmth in it which obviously affects the scene when you look at it it will give you a different feeling altogether so again if we go to um, the full screen and we we'll look at the before and the after you realize it's a very massive difference that we're doing so a very very massive difference that we have um, graded that's what i'm saying is that little subtle movements that little subtle movements so we have to keep that in mind so it's not it's not like um, um oh i need to achieve this grade so just punching 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 hit the contrast hit the contrast hit the colors and then it becomes too colorful and stuff so that's another grade let's grab that and now let's talk about let's reset this quickly and let's talk about LUX here's where DaVinci Resolve shines again I mean um, Premiere Pro and I believe uh, Final Cut also has LUX so if I'm going to be very very straightforward very simple I can't be bothered to be creative or I have to um, have a specific look that's out there that people are on it um, we can easily just put in LUT. Uh, just before we put in the LUT, actually, let's talk about the teal and orange, um, the teal and orange look, which is very, very, um, very, very popular right now in um, blockbuster movies. That transformer look where we have um, the orange and then the teal, the that bluish, sky bluish kind of look. So let's see if we can quickly. Um, 
create that and I'm just using two nodes to do that so it's not anything complicated so the first thing is first I've dialing my contrast giving it nicely contrast um, I'll bring my highlights down a little I'll highlights nicely down mid tones bring down the mid tones a little and let's go into the second note so this the first note right here is my bass correction so if you look at that already we've got a lot we've achieved a lot so the second note now the trick is um, if we take a look at this this is that same teal and orange um, teal and orange look so if we take a look at this image right here to understand it it's just breaking down the colors so if we look at this you realize that the blacks there is nice blue in there there's blue in the black yeah the skin tone has a lot of orange which is the mid-tone area remember black is shadow mid-tones are mostly skin tones and anything in between um, neutral look and um, um, highlights so that's the mid-tone and then the highlights the highlights has a little bit of blue in it as well so it's just two colors that we achieve we use to achieve this particular um, blockbuster look so let's get back there again and then let's see what we can do so the highlights are more blue yeah so we've got that blue teal kind of look so whilst we're doing it we're still trying to see the difference we're making right there yeah we've got the teal in the highlights so if you look at the white areas you realize that it all turns blue once I turn the correction on so you've got that green greenish blue to it and then the next thing is our mid-tone has that orange look yeah so we pump up the orange into the mid-tone and then um, there was a little bit of blue teal in the shadow area as well Let's bring that in. Let's go to our primary colors. And I'm just literally doing the exact same thing. So I'm bringing in the teal into my highlight. And then I'm pushing in the orange. into the mid-tones area and a little bit of teal in the blue so remember I'm literally just using two notes to achieve this look without having to apply several different notes And for this particular, if we're trying to match this, you realize that the blacks, the shadows are really, really crushed. If you look on the waveform, you realize it that's completely past the zero. It's nicely crushed to be able to get that colorful look. So we're going to be crushing that. We'll take it into um, the second node. And we'll introduce more contrast by just simply dialing in the contrast dialing in the contrast and then it's very 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 saturated if you can see very very saturated a lot of colors so we'll do exact same thing and we will bring in a lot of saturation Let's use that with the color boost.
Yeah, the teal and orange is quite tricky. If you're not careful, you introduce too much green into the footage, and obviously that's not it. It's teal, so it's is that skyish blue kind of feel. And that's what it is. So that's what you got to bear in mind, not to um, introduce that, because obviously you lose that teal and orange feel. So right here, we are very, very close to this image. I mean, if you look at it again, let's go side by side. If you look at it right here, we have very, very, we are very, very close to what is showing here. Obviously, this is a fabric and this is leather, so that's why it's shiny and stuff. But if you look in the shadow area, you realize that that blue, that teal, greenish teal, blue kind of look is in that shadow area. And then um, the orange is all in the skin tone and the mid-tones here. So it's very, very straightforward. Um, if you look at it um, on a full scale, again, let's look at the before and after here's where we started from and here's where we have ended so it's the costume I can't seem to emphasize on it so much costume is very very important costume and your ambient your surrounding where you're doing that shoot is very very important to achieve a certain look so even if it's worth um, the effort or the time Go out, get the um, the the cast members um, to put on their costume. Go out to that surrounding or that location and do just still pictures, not even video. Just take pictures of them in position, and then come back to the studio and achieve that grade. Achieve that grade that you want before you actually go ahead and um, go and shoot. So. Um, with the new red um, cameras and a few of those um, field monitors out there they actually allow you to uh, create a look whilst you're on set so before you start rolling you dial in all those dials and get the look that you want and then save it as a lot so when you save it as a lot and then you're done with your shoot you come to the studio and then you can easily apply those LUTs to um, the footage so it looks exactly as how you intended to but obviously if you don't have that do make a habit of it go out shoot still pictures come to the studio and make sure you are about to achieve you are achieving the look that you intended for before you start hitting the record button that way you will save the colorist or you yourself coloring the footage a lot of time and a lot of money so um, again if we look at the before and the after um, this where we started from and this is where we've ended before and after before and after right so let's clear all of that and now let's go the simpler way where we just going to drop in a lot. So supposedly you have um, um, gone out, done the stills, you've created the look and you've saved it as a lot. So you can just go into your LUT palette. Um, this is how it works with DaVinci Resolve. You go into your LUT palette and then you can just drop in with just one click. This is how I want the footage to look like. And then you've got your LUT. So these are some LUTs that um, I've got on my system. Um, there are several different looks. So if the costume, again, I can't keep stressing on it, if it's um, right, the ambient is right, the, um, the shot is clean, nicely balanced, not overexposed areas, not um, overblown areas, um, the LUT works like a charm. So again, this is just one click and let me just show you again. 
if you look at the before and the after this is just one click one click and this is how far we get ready so it saves you so much time and um, effort in getting these things done um, that same teal and orange look that we created right here as a lot and I can just one click and then we've got that look just one click so this is how it works and it makes your life so much easier for the before the after the before the after right guys without further ado wasting a lot of your time I think we've been running for um, about an hour now uh, we'll just keep it as it is and we'll come back again with more tutorials um, if you have any questions to ask um, do go ahead and um, post a comment and I'll reply to it and again I apologize for those who um, I could not reply to your comment immediately I'm gonna do that once I get off um, the computer and I'll make sure I reply to you. Lastly, uh, DaVinci Resolves, um, when we created the look, if you remember, we took images of it, we took a still, which is saved here as a LUT again, so that we can just grab and then just drop it on to the node itself and then straight away we have the look that we want. Straight away we have the look that we want and if you look on it here you realize that this is what we've done previously this is what we've done previously so if i reset that and then i go on the second um, still that we shot and grab as well i just drop it on there and then we've got that look as well so it's a very very interesting um, um, software to actually work with uh, compared to adobe and um, uh, final cut in some ways so thank you for tuning in thank you for following and in advance thanks to those who are already subscribed to the channel if you haven't do go ahead beneath this post there is a post um, prior to this um, live tutorial called secret to achieving any film look um, if you click on that, that will take you to my YouTube page. Subscribe there and you get prompted once there is another live tutorial. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Peace out.